Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Force.com car series, Speedy Static Resource Development. When working with CSS, JavaScript or image files um, that you're going to be using across multiple pages, you should try them uh, and store them in static resource files on Salesforce. Um, it's a good principle, first of all, because it's a dry principle, so you don't repeat yourself. Um, and what you can do is if you've got a piece of CSS or JavaScript or an image that's being used upon multiple web pages within your application, you can just store them in a single point. And what that means is that you get a single place where you can uh, change and reference it from. If you want to update your CSS across the entire application, you do it in one place um, and it changes everywhere for you. So it's a good principle from that point of view. Um, and Salesforce also has a content delivery network for fast delivery of um, anything stored in static resources. So you know it's going to be served quickly and served efficiently. One of the problems uh, that there is with static resources, however, is that during development it can be slow to tweak um, and change them. And you don't really want to be using uh, code in line because A, it's a bad principle, you want to try and take it out into a static resource as early as possible. And B, you've got to save the page up again every time, which can take its time in sort of development. Um, and saving Visual Force pages isn't always the speediest thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through two different methods today um, of how we could improve uh, the way in which we can develop with static resources. So the first is to use a public file on Dropbox. Uh, this idea was um, told to me one morning on the train by uh, Tony Scott. Um, you can see Tony's Twitter handle here, at tscottdev. And he was told this uh, apparently by another developer friend of ours, John Connors, at John Connors there. Um, and the idea is that what you do is you store your CSS or JavaScript or image file um, in a, uh, as a public file within a uh, public Dropbox folder. And then what you can do is this allows you to get a URL that links to that file. And you can use that in your page using a standard uh, link or script tag. And then what you can do is you can just load them up. Uh, change them, make a save into Dropbox really quickly and easily and just refresh your page to make changes while you're working with CSS. So that's really good for development. The second method uh, was shown to me last week, in fact, uh, when I went to see David Helmer, whose uh, Twitter handle KidTsunami is there, um, present at the London Developer Group. And he was giving some top tips about using Maven's Mate, which is an open source IDE written by Joe Ferraro, um, and you can see Joe's Twitter handle and the Maven's Mate Twitter handle there. For those of you who aren't using uh, Maven's Mate or who wonder what ID I'm using for all these demos, it is Maven's Mate. Um, and Maven's Mate gives you a simple way of editing static resources and redeploying them using simple commands so that you have to create, uh, so that what you do is you have your static resource on Salesforce, you can edit it locally, and then it will bundle it back up and redeploy it for you. One of the big things about this, though, is that you must have a static resource created to then use using this process. So we're going to go through the pair of these. So the first thing we're going to look at is the account list page we had from last time. Uh, and as you can see here, it's the same page. I've added a little bit of JavaScript so that if we were to view the page now, uh, when I click one of the names, it says hello and then the account name. So hello GenePoint or hello S-Force. So nothing overly exciting, um, but just some example code that we can use here. So the first thing we're going to do is extract these out into two separate files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, or I'm going to cut the uh, CSS there, and I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to align this neatly so it looks nicer. And I'm going to save that as a CSS file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign up. I've got a Dropbox account already. If you haven't, sign up for a free Dropbox account. Um, and what you do is there's a folder called public. I happen to have another folder called force.comcast. And I'm going to create a folder that I'm going to use to bundle my resources. I'm just going to call resources. And in there, I'm going to create styles.css. So if I go into finder now, what you can see I've done is I've just got folder here called resources within my public Dropbox folders and it's called styles.css. Very simple. And we're going to take a JavaScript function and we're going to create a JavaScript file uh, called hello.css, uh, hello.javascript even. Uh, 
go to resources, load.js, and we save that. So now we've got both of our files saved into the public folder. What we can do is we can go back into Finder. And if we right click on one of these files, we can see there's a new option called copy public link. Now this only works in the public folder of your Dropbox setup. So we're going to copy that public link. And in my account list page, I'm going to remove these old tags. And I'm going to include a style sheet link. So copy in, that's for the style sheet. And I'm going to have another one which is for the script. Um, let's just go and get the scripts URL. Copy that in very simply. Make sure we close our tag and we save those up. So, what we've done is just use standard uh, HTML markup, you know, a normal link. Uh, to a style sheet, a normal JavaScript, um, you know, script tag, nothing, you know, out of the ordinary or something we wouldn't have done with normal web development. And if we go back to our page now and refresh, should all still work. Fantastically, it does, and we know it's saved up. And what we can do is, as I'm using Chrome, I can open the inspector. If I look under resources here. I can see under style sheets we've got styles.css. And if I open the link in new tab, you can see it's going to a Dropbox folder. And similarly, if I did the same, uh, if I did the same for the script file, it will go again to a Dropbox folder. So you can see that that's working wonderfully for us. So what we're going to do now is make a change to the files in Dropbox and show how quick and easy it is to update them. So go back into here and let's say we wanted to make the green color to be, uh, I don't know, something different. My CSS isn't good enough to tell me what this is going to be. Uh, my hex codes aren't good enough to tell me what this is going to be. But let's go for something like that and save that file there. And let's just update the JavaScript to say hello there and the account name. So we save both of those and we can see that they're updated in Dropbox almost instantaneously. And if we refresh the page now, yep, uh, Burlington Textiles has definitely got a different hue to it. And if I click one of these, it says hello there. So by using the Dropbox method, we can see that it's really quick and easy to make changes to a static resource that we're working with and just update it very, very quickly on the fly. So it's very, very nice for us to work with it like that. Uh, let's go back now and change this back. So it's easier for us to work with again moving forward. And they're all saved up. So once we've closed the inspector, we're now going to create a static resource. Go to the static resources option under the develop area in our build for setup, and we click new. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload our zip file in there. So first thing we need to do is create it. So if we have a look here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the resources folder, and we're going to compress that. Now, I'm using uh, Mac, as you can tell, so there's a nice, simple way of doing it. In Windows, you just create a zip file with that stored in it. What we're going to do is we're going to name this as resources. We're going to choose our file. And we're going to upload it. Save. That's going to save away. So, what I'm going to do is while that's happened, I'm just going to refresh my project from the server so it pulls down my uh, new static resource for us to use in a minute. So 
The reason we've put them in a zip file and bundled all the static resources together is, it, again, it makes it easier for them to be served and a little bit quicker for them to be served and work with. So it's just a way of helping us work with the files in a kind of more consistent manner, bundling them all together rather than having many separate pieces so that you have to upload, uh, upload multiple files. So now let's just delete these tags. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace them with some code I made earlier. And the reason I'm just going to copy this across is so that I can explain it while it's saving up with Salesforce. Um, so while this is saving, you can see here um, that what we've got is we've got an Apex style sheet tag, and that's going to use the URL4 uh, formula option. It's going to look uh, for the resources resource, and then it's going to go in the resources folder of that zip file and find the styles.css file, and same for the include script. So if we go back up here. And if we refresh the page again, everything still seems to be working. S Force, University of Arizona, fantastic. And if we inspect now where our resources are coming from, we should see that we'll get a Salesforce URL, or a URL that points to Salesforce. So opening that in a new tab, you can see now it's a visual.force.com, it's a resource. And you can see that we've got some unique identifiers here, but it points us to a Salesforce URL, so we know we're using the static resource. And same again for the script file. So if we just want to do that for proof, it's always good to check these things. You can see here again, we've got a URL that's using Salesforce. So that's really useful. And um, what we've seen so far is that we can use um, a Dropbox file to do it, so that if we wanted to make changes to that, a piece of code while it was on Dropbox, we could have just updated the Dropbox file and that would have only updated it um, for us to refresh the URL um, and we could have just refreshed the page. What we're going to do now is we're going to just create a resource bundle. So I'm going to use a maven's make command which is create resource bundle and it lists all the possible resources for me to work with. So I'm going to choose the resource resource funnily enough and if I open this up you can see now it's provided this new option for me with all the resources in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to edit the amber color to suddenly be, uh, suddenly be blue. Save that. And now I can use another command called deploy resource bundle. And I'm going to choose the resources bundle. And you can see now this is bundling and deploying this to the server. It's just working away creating this, serving up properly so that it can be saved. And if I now refresh the page, hopefully the amber one should change to blue and we can see that we've had our page updated correctly. It's a really nice and easy way of doing it. What we'll do is just it's a really nice and easy way of doing it. We go back to the page now, we can see that we've used the static resource to do so. So that's the end of this video. As you can see, we've covered two different methods of working with static resources. One where you use a Dropbox public file to just save your file and use a relative link so you can work with it and make and update changes as you need to. We've also seen a way of deploying and working with static resources using Maven's Mate. If you have any further questions around uh, content you've seen in this video, any ideas you'd like to put forward, or any questions at all, please tweet at us at force.comcasts or at pbatterson uh, and please provide some feedback um, on what you think of the videos.